This uh, video will focus on inverse hybrid. If you remember, we talked about hybrid, which was the H parameters for the two port network model. And this time we're gonna talk about the inverse hybrid. It's, pretty, it's more or less the same, except uh, some of the I and the V values have been switched around to basically look at it from a, from a different perspective. Again, as we mentioned before, G and H, both of them are especially suited for um, dependent source and devices that have transistors in them uh, for those analysis. So let's go ahead and get started by, uh, by the two by two matrix that we usually start with. So, so we've got the G matrix basically being G11, G12, G21, and G2, too much like the other parameters. And the only difference here is that for this particular parameter to be, um, to be used, our assumption is that the values we have for it is we have V1 and I1, I'm sorry, I2, and we are hoping to find using this, uh, the, the easiest thing to find would be I1 and v2 and uh, so that's that's kind of the reason we use this and as we've done bef as we've done in the previous uh, parameter discussions that we've had in derivation uh, this simply by multiplying the matrices together you will be able to say okay this is g11 v1 plus g12 i2 and um, that whole thing is equal to i1 and then V2 is equal to G21, V1 plus G22, I2. Great. So now we have all of that uh, figured out and right there. And as we have done before, uh, there are many ways of finding the parameter, but the easiest one is to um, input uh, what, what is termed as an input variables, V1 and V2, set one of them to zero and find the other, the G's, and then set the other input I2 to zero and find the other, uh, the remainder, remaining um, parameters. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we'll end up with. If we go ahead and set I2 equal to zero, if we set that, then that would give us basically the fact that G11 is equal to I1 over V1 and then from the lower uh, equation, we're gonna get G21 equals to V2 over V1. And of course, if we go off and say, okay, what, how about if V1 was zero? Again, as we have mentioned before, I2 being equal to zero, that basically means we leave port two open, and V1 being equal to zero means port one is short. So if we use this, then we will find that um, G12 could be found by simply as a ratio of I1 over I2, and then finally G22 could be found by a ratio of V2 over I2. Now, as we see, this is Ohm, this is Mohs or Siemens, this is um, uh, unitless, and this one is unitless as well as the amp over amp or volt over volt. That's pretty much it at this point. So if some, for example, if you need to do an example to just get a better sense of what's going on, we can go back and uh, rework the same circuit that we have been using in discussing um, these type of things. Okay, so let's go ahead and paste that circuit here. And there is the circuit. So um, from here, we know that the first option is to set I2 equal to zero. So again, it's really important for each case to draw and use a color so we can actually see what are the changes I'm making. So we are doing this particular case up here. So if we do that, then we'll find out that, okay, G11, when, I, when I2 is equal to zero, again, I'll put it up here. I2 is equal to zero. That's the case we're working on. G11 is going to be I1 over V1. So I got to find a ratio of that someplace in here the best I can. And then we'll find that G21 um, is going to be V2 minus V1. Okay, so let's go to take a look at this. 
and try to uh, see what is the best way to solve this to get could get the answers that we are looking for so in in this particular case i am looking to uh, find the ratio of i1 over v1 and i look at that thing and that's basically looks to me like it's one over um, the equivalent resistor as i'm looking this way so so that's that's a great so so if i can find the r equivalent from the port one that i'm done so as we look this way we will see that that's our equivalent is equal to uh, basically as i'm looking at that is basically 100 it's in series with um, since i2 i2 is zero then i basically that means the current through 200 and 150 is the same they're connected on one end so they're series which basically 50 is in parallel with 350. Okay, so so that's that's more or less what I see. Um, doing a little side calculation here for fifth for uh, 50 being in parallel with 350. That tells me that is this is roughly 44 ohms. So this whole thing is 140. Um, 144 um, uh, ohms. So we found this. So G11, then it's going to be 1 over 144. And uh, therefore, and the units are more because it's I1 over V1. All right. So now, now that we've done this piece, let's go ahead and work on that second piece. And now we want to try to find out if, if under this condition we can find out what's V2 over V1. We know this this piece is V2. That's great. So what else do I know um, uh, in this case? Uh, so um, let's see. Uh, so one thing is, um, uh, since I2 is equal to 0 here, um, uh, over here, then uh, whatever is current is flowing here, that's the same current as flowing here. and um, um, so so maybe maybe a KVL would be a good way uh, to find this. This is a little tougher, <laughs> I suppose. So this is I1 here, and this is some I. We don't know what it is, so let's go, uh, go ahead and call it I3 just to make our life a little easier. Um, so, so if I do a KVL at I1, let's see what that gives us. That will give me... Um, 100 I1 plus 50 I1 minus I3 and then um, the then we have a minus V1 let's make that just a touch smaller V1 equal to 0 then I can do a KVL at I3 and KVL at I3 basically gives me um, 50 I1 minus I3, uh, and uh, so so if I've uh, I'm sorry this is via the I3 so this is going to be I3 minus I1, and um, uh, plus 200 I3 plus 150 I3 equal to zero. Another equation I have is that V2 is equal to 150 I three as you can see so this is great so a couple of things that can happen which allows me to to, to get, achieve my objective one is from here i find that there's 50 plus 200 plus 150 so i've got 400 i3 and 400 i3 is equal to 50 i1 Oops, this is 50 so from from here i can basically figure out okay great so i1 is equal to, uh, let's actually let's do i3 is equal 1 8 because i'm trying to get rid of this I, I suppose it doesn't really matter which way we go but i3 is 1 8 of uh, um, actually what i'm going to do i'm going to change my mind here and basically 
But my goal is to find a relationship between V1 and V2 and mentally what I'm trying to do is trying to get rid of I1 and I3 in this equation, see if that would help us out. So in this case, I1, uh, I3 is equal to 1 8 I1, that's great. Uh, and then over here, I can tell that I3 is equal to V2 over 150, okay? So if I put I3 is V2 over 150 uh, into the above equation, I can find a relationship. Actually, I should have done it the other way, so I'll do it the other way. I1 then taking advantage of these two equation uh, will give me um, uh, replace I3 with 1 8th, and then I1 becomes 8 V2 divided by 150. And I simply can take this and plug it back up here this equation, I could have cleaned it up to 150, I1 minus 50, I3 minus V1 equal to zero. And so if I solve that, might as well, we've committed so much time to it. So I could take these two and plug them in the first equation. I will have 150 times eight V2 over 150. And then the next one is minus 50 times V2 over 150 minus v1 equal to zero. Do a little cleanup, if you will, with this thing. I'll end up with um, v1 on one side and v2, cancel these out. You're gonna have eight v2 in here. So I have eight v2 minus v2 over three. So a little more cleanup. So we're gonna have 24 minus one is 23. So we're gonna have 23 v2 over three equal to V1, and uh, what were we looking for? I forgot, G1, yeah, there you go, G21. So G21 is V2 over V1, and that basically it's gonna be, uh, the way it works out is three over 23. So, and the unit, there is no units, okay? So that's great, and then the last thing we gotta do is redo this problem, this time, assuming that V1 is equal to uh, zero, which means there is a short here. So let me use a different color size. It's gonna run into each other. So we wanna find these, but we know that this V1 is shorted here, okay? So I need to find a relationship between I1 and I2, and then we let's do the second one first. That's a lot easier. So G22, is V2 over I2, which is basically our equivalent when we look at it from this direction. So that makes it kind of easy because that's just gonna be 100 in parallel with 50. That whole thing in series with 200. That whole thing in, in parallel with 150. So if you work all of these out, we should end up with about 91 ohms. And that's our G22, that was kind of easy. The next one is a little more involved, G12, G12, just write it here so we remember. So by the way, this is a condition with V1 is equal to zero. And so G2, G12 is a little more involved because that's I1 over I2. So let's see if we can kind of figure that out. Um, um, so so what, what we need to do here is uh, we need to write a couple of equations, it look like. So I could just, uh, this is basically I1 in here. In here, I don't know what it is, so we'll just call it I3. And of course, in here is gonna be I1 coming, basically if I wanted to draw it, it would be minus I2. So in order to find this, I have to write a KVL for I1. I have to write a KVL for I3. I don't need to write the last one, that's fine. It's just gonna play out just fine. From the I1, the first the one where I will get an I1 uh, plus um, 50, I1 minus I3 equal to zero. From the second, from the third, I3, the second loop, um, I will get 50, I3 minus I1, uh, plus 200 I3, and continuing on, uh, plus 150 I3 
to I3 minus plus I2. Remember, this is going the negative way. Okay, so that's equal to zero. So now I've got two equation uh, and three unknown, but that's not a problem because I only want a ratio. I'm not trying to figure this thing out. So if we were to work all of these out, uh, we will be able to find uh, I1 over I2. Uh, so let's see if we can. Um, so, so all I have to do basically is from the here, um, I can find the relate I3 in terms of I1. So I3 is going to be 50 of these, and then I1 is going to be 150. So we're going to have I3 is equal to 3 I1. Great. And then I can plug this back in here, and life is good. We're done. So let's go see, uh, 50, 3 I1 minus I1 plus 600 I1 plus 150, uh, 3 I1 plus I2 equal to 0. Great. Okay, so give, keep, keep cleaning this up. Uh, we got 150. Times, I'm sorry, two, 50 times 2i1, so we got 100 here, we got a 600 here, we're up to 700, 700 and 450, so it's 1150 here. Okay, so 1150i1 uh, and minus 150i2, so 150 times that. Hopefully I did the calculation right, and as we know, what we were looking for was g12, and G12 is equal to I1 over I2, which simply becomes minus 50. That's 150. Yes. 150 divided by 1150. And there we have it. And the unit is unitless. So one last thing we got to do, we got to, uh, before we are finished, we have to pull all of these together to say what the G matrix is. So the G matrix for this one is going to be, so it's going to be G12, that's the number we have here, is minus one fifth, uh, oh, that's two one. That's so one two is going to be up here, minus 150 divided by 1150. Let's go find, and then we have G22, 91 ohms. And notice we're putting the units there. And then down here we have, what do we have? We have G21 as 3 over 23. So 3 over 23. And the only thing I'm looking for here is G11. So we can get done here. And I don't... Oh, there it is. There it is. It's 1 over 144 moles. So 1 over 144 moles. And I'll take care of it. We are done. Um, so... Um, pretty much more or less the same as what we've been working on before. Um, the only difference here is the relationship. So uh, by the way, if you don't like any of these, you can make up your own uh, by simply figuring out what you want to put on this side and what you want to put on this side and then finding the parameters. And if it's not already been done, you can put your name on it. That brings us to the end of this, uh, this video about the inverse hybrid parameters.